I show you how to make this cool hexagon room with an acid pit today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and order my t-shirt below. Recently, some of my patrons asked, Hey, Professor, where are the crafts in Dungeon Craft? We haven't done one in a while. I actually did one recently called The Pit and the Pendulum, episode 219. Even more recently, I teamed up with Tabletop Witchcraft to create a Krampus lair. So links to those below. But I don't do as many crafts as I used to do because I'm really an ultimate dungeon terrain, kind of one size fits all kind of guy. Plus tabletop witchcraft and black magic craft and channels like that do so much uh, a better job than I do. But recently I made this. This is a hexagon room. I wanted to do something really cool for a final fight that was coming up with a big boss. It's got an acid pit and it came out pretty good and it's super easy if you've never crafted before. This is a great craft. Don't be intimidated because I didn't really use any special tools. So here's the room close up. It's got an acid pit in the center. I'm super proud of it. It's got this skull and an arm in there and I've got pillars in the background. They're resin courtesy of my patron Bald Rage. Thanks to Bald Rage and all the other patrons. But this project is really fast, super simple. You don't need a proxon cutter, fancy tools, or resin, just insulation foam, a utility knife, plastic mesh, craft paints, and Vallejo still water. So I got this birch hexagon for $5 at my local hardware store, and I had this bottle of Vallejo water texture laying around, and I've never made an acid pit, so this is a first. I traced out the hexagon onto my foam insulation in two sections because I didn't have a single piece that was large enough. I cut it out with my utility knife. I'm always careful when I cut, I use an Another cutting board as a straight edge. You could use a metal ruler if you have one. I couldn't find one. Never use a wooden ruler because you can end up cutting off your fingertips. I use Gorilla Glue as the adhesive. Gorilla Glue is the best adhesive. It's really the only one that will work on any kind of styrofoam. You could just give it a thin layer, spread it out, then you spray the other surface and it's that water that activates the Gorilla Glue and makes it foam up and causes that adhesive effect. Now the great thing about Gorilla Glue is you can shift it around and make sure it's actually centered. Then you weight it down with a pan and you wait overnight. It will foam up, uh, the weight is there so it doesn't shift around too much. Next I traced out a one inch grid, not because I use gridded combat, I don't, but it, it's just really easy for creating a pattern later on. I cut off the excess with my utility knife and I also beveled the edge. I don't use walls because I finally blocked the player's view. So I want to add some visual interest. So I like a beveled edge. I shade in every other square. That's where I'm going to put my sewer grating. And I just shave it down with a very small utility knife. It's great to have a number of sized utility knives. And this is granny grating. It's just plastic mesh. And you're just going to cut it with scissors, pop it in, and make a sewer grating out of it. Super simple. I carve out a flagstone pattern with my Vic Atlantic gel roller. I also used a X-Acto knife to get a, a more defined mortar lines. Uh, make sure the mortar lines don't line up. That's how you get that flagstone pattern. Then you take some tin foil and stamp it. Make sure you get the sides. That way it will look like tumbled stone. You can see that from this side view. Wow, that looks great already. Next step is the Mod Podge and black paint. You mix them up and then I sing my favorite song. I see some pink foam and I want to paint it black. Once that is thoroughly dry, painted with Craft Smart Tan, and I add some other colors for variation. I use golden brown, gray, fawn, and then I dry brush it suede to pull all of the colors together so that when you wash it, you do get a little bit of a sense of variation there. I make my own wash with forest green paint Put a couple drops of that in, then some black ink, you can get that at any craft store, and some distilled water. Of course, you add a drop of dish soap as well to aid the flow. And you wipe it off in a paper towel, and if it comes out black, 
that's about the look that you want. And I was pretty happy with this, the way it turned out. I only needed to do one coat. You could see me painting here in real time instead of just speeding it up. And that's because I wanted to accentuate. If you go slower, there's less chance you're going to miss something. And also, you're going to get less splatter. You can see here, I'm doing this work on my wife's new marble kitchen countertop. So another tip is to do this when your spouse is out of the house. But just paint slower and there won't be that splatter on that nice marble. I got a ton of this black mesh on Amazon and it's enough to make windows and gratings for a lifetime. You just trim them up with a pair of scissors, pop them in, and you're done. Now for the acid pit. So I, I did a base coat of forest green. You can't see it here, it looks black, but it is forest green. Then I go in with a damp sponge and put down a layer of golden brown. This technique is called stippling. I'm gradually building up the color, allowing a few minutes to dry between layers, and this will provide color variation and depth. My next layer is ochre, and the final layer is Games Workshop Uriel Yellow, just to give it some foamy highlights. And I added that skull and that arm, they're from leftover skeleton pieces I had lying around, and now I'm going to pour in the Vallejo water texture. This stuff is great. Now, it's important that you do not shake the bottle, that will cause bubbles. You just want to pour it, and you want to pour a thin layer, just enough to cover the surface. Once it's dry, 24 hours later, I'm gonna do my next coat. Now to this layer, I'm going to add one drop of yellow food coloring. That may not seem like a lot. You're tempted to put in two, just put in one. It's gonna tint it so you get this kind of egg yolk kind of look, and you're gonna pour it in, and again, just tilt it so it covers. You want very thin layers poured, one every 24 hours. Now I'm gonna do one more layer, but while I'm waiting for it to dry, I go in and I paint the sewer gratings. I, I think it's scale color thrash metal, but any metal will do. And I wash it to dull that color down, but still make it look metallic. I also did a few spots with, I think it's called Jokeroo or Jockaroo orange. It's a Games Workshop color, and that gives, could create some rusty spots. And here it is, all dry, and it's got this great kind of glowing look, even though I'm not using any kind of lights or anything like that. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The skull and the arm really convey the idea that it, it is acid. Those pillars in the background, I primed brown, then used Games Workshop Ustapi Bone, highlighted with Screaming Skull, and washed it with Agrax Earthshade. That figure is Countess Claudia von Hammerstein, one of the main villains of my campaign, and if you want stats for the Countess and this monstrosity, you should check out the extended version of this video on my Patreon. Also on Patreon, you'll find my three-page D&D house rules called Deathbringer with layout by Runehammer, and you get access to the DungeonCraft Discord server, so lots of cool stuff there. And if you do make this craft, I'd love to see you post pictures of it on the DungeonCraft Facebook group. But I'm really happy with the way my acid pit turned out, and I hope you have fun crafting it too. Thanks for watching, and may all your rolls be 20. Deathbringer again. Click on the next video. If you do, he promises not to sing. Now get my t-shirt and watch more Dungeon Craft.